Hi there, it's Dr. Susie Inu here, anaesthetist based on the lands of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation and COVID community doctor. In this video, I'm asking the question about whether you are immunosuppressed. And the reason is because it might have certain implications for how we manage COVID with you. Okay, so the first part is back to my whiteboard. Are you immunosuppressed? So these are the four main reasons why someone might be regarded as being immunosuppressed. And we sometimes use the term immunocompromised. To me, they're interchangeable. Apologies to all my immunology friends out there. So the first one there is if you're living with HIV or whether you have AIDS. Now, if you have AIDS, that definitely would make you immunosuppressed. With HIV, we might do things like look at your CD4 counts uh, to determine whether you might be eligible for some extra treatments, and I'll get to those later on. Likewise, if you have a blood cancer, so not all blood cancers would be regarded as causing immunocompromise. We're looking there at things like leukemias and lymphomas, whether you're under current treatment for them or whether you've just recently completed a course of treatment for them. The next one is whether you've had a transplant. So a solid organ transplant where you're still on immunosuppressant medications would almost certainly qualify you. And then there's various other transplants that we might need to discuss with you to whether you would be eligible. And finally, there's various immunosuppressant medications. So things like high dose prednisolone or being on some of the monoclonal antibody infusions, for example, where you need to come into hospital and have a drip and have medication put in over about half an hour usually on a regular basis. Those medications might also lead you to become immunocompromised or immunosuppressed. Also within that category is having active chemo or radiotherapy. Not all agents will be considered in that, which is why, again, we need to discuss these with you. And the last one there that some services might include is whether you're on dialysis for renal failure. So why is this important? Well, as I mentioned earlier, you might be eligible for what we call the early treatments. These are usually in the family called monoclonal antibodies. I hopefully have another video coming out soon, which explains what they are. So my suggested approach to this is if you think you fall within one of these categories is to speak with your specialist. You will almost certainly be having the particular condition that it is looked after by a specialist. So have a chat with your specialist and ask them, are you immunocompromised? The next question I would ask the specialist is whether you think these monoclonal antibody therapies for COVID would also be able to be given whilst you're being treated for whatever condition it is you might have. Quite naturally, quite a few people I've talked with in this situation want to confirm that it's safe to have these monoclonal therapies in conjunction with the other medications that they're taking for their condition. And that can take a little bit of time. And as I mentioned, these are early therapies. It's really important for us to be able to give them to you within a very narrow time frame. So it can cost a bit of time having that conversation with your specialist. So if you have the opportunity and you like being well prepared, have that conversation nice and early. The other thing to ask your specialist is whether they know if any local health services are offering these therapies. So the names of the particular medications are Sotrovimab, and the other one is Ronaprive. It's otherwise known overseas as Regeneron, and it's a combination of two monoclonal antibodies. Their names are Casarivimab and Indevimab. That one, unfortunately, is less effective against the Omicron variant. Now, I don't know the latest figures, but I think both medications are in quite limited supply in Australia. So some of what I have to say will vary in terms of what is available. Okay, the final thing that I have here is PEP, which stands for post-exposure prophylaxis. So this is for people who might be eligible for monoclonal antibody therapy before you get COVID but once you've been exposed. So an example there might be that you have a kidney transplant and you're taking immunosuppressant medications, or you've got multiple sclerosis and you're coming into hospital regularly for an infusion of monoclonal antibodies, or you might be on dialysis. And someone you know, be it your partner, a child, somebody brings COVID into your home. 
So once they've been confirmed as having COVID and before you get it, you might be able to receive Ronaprev. Currently, that's the only one that's authorized for use in Australia for this purpose as an infusion to hopefully prevent you catching COVID. So that's a very detailed and nuanced discussion. And it's something, again, if you know ahead of time that you're immunosuppressed and that you might be eligible and you might know what the local services are in your area that are able to provide this, these are things that help to fast track those conversations. And the other thing I want to add is it's likely that you'll be eligible for these early treatments regardless of your vaccination status. So please do go ahead and have these conversations. Okay, I hope you found that useful. I hope you're staying safe and you haven't caught COVID and thanks for watching.